Uh, hi, this is David, and this is going to be part 8 of the Basics of Game Theory. Uh, today we'll be talking about protecting your range from bluffs. Now, we started to get into this in the end of uh, video number 5, but I sort of departed from it on videos 6 and 7 because I thought it was important to explain uh, how valuable a polarized range is. So, if anything we go over in part 8, is not clear to you, I suggest that you look at videos number six and seven where we discuss polarized range. Right now we're also going to be looking a little bit about the at the optimal offensive and defensive uh, bets when bluffing and the frequency of our value bets to bluffs and how that can change depending on different situations. Now We've said plenty of times that uh, when bluffing optimally, our bet should have a ratio of value bets to bluffs that exa is exactly the same as the pot odds that we offer to our opponent. Now, we went over this game many, many times in the last several videos, uh, where player one has dealt one of these four cards, player two has dealt the jack, they've each emptied a dollar, uh, player two has the option of betting or folding, and then player two can either call or fold. Now, when player one bets two dollars into the two dollar pot, he offers his opponent uh, to one on his call, so his ratio of value bets to bluffs should be two value bets for each bluff. Now, this is the general case, but it's not the all-inclusive case. Um, this is certainly the strategy that you use uh, when your opponent has only two options, which are to call or fold. So if you have a single opponent and you're going all in, uh, this certainly applies. The place where it may not apply is where you may have a variety of different things. It could be multiple opponents. Uh, it could be a multi-street game where you anticipate more rounds of betting and uh, more cards to come. Or um, your opponent may have multiple options. Not just uh, you know column or folding, but perhaps he can re-raise you. Uh, but anyway, if this were a situation like pre-flop and hold them, okay, we would use a different system than this for uh, putting together our range, how we're going to balance it between uh, value bets and bluffs. And the system we would use be, would be more similar to our optimal defense. Now the optimal defense that we were talking about before, uh, when your opponent bets, is that you look at the pot odds that your opponent is getting on as a bluff, and you determine how frequently he needs you to fold in order to cross this zero EV threshold, call that amount. Like, for instance, here, if we were player two and we're faced with a bet, if player two bets two dollars, he, into this pot, he's getting one to one, okay, on his bluff, if he's bluffing. Therefore, we need to call 50% of the time to keep him from making a profit. Now, when well, we're in a situation such as holding and we're pre-flop, we're going to use this same defensive principle in constructing our offense. And the way we're going to do that, basically, okay, we'll take this situation right here. Okay, we have a 2-5 holding game, and we covered a little bit of this in uh, video number 5. With blinds of 2 and 5, we're the hero, we raise to twenty dollars. Now we're going to have a range here, and the range will include some some value hands and some bluffs. But here we are using what is closer to the optimal defense, in looking at the pot odds your opponent will be getting on a bluff. Determine how frequently he needs you fold in order to cross the zero EV threshold. We're going to use that principle to protect our betting range from a bluff, and. Here's an example of what I'm talking about. Let's say the small blind is posted two, the big blind is posted five. Uh, you may have a couple of people in between here who fold, but it's our bet right now when we bet $20. We open the pot for $20, and this is pre-flop. Okay? Now, we're not necessarily making a bluff uh, to try to win this. Sometimes we are. We wouldn't mind uh, winning this $7. But there's a variety of different things that can happen. We have many more cards to come. We have more streets of betting coming up. And this is sort of a setup action. Uh, we would like to be playing against an opponent on whom we have position, we have initiative, and things can go fair. 
what we're mainly worried about when we make this $20 bet is that an opponent who plays after us may come back and bluff us off of our hand. Okay? We want to protect ourselves from a profitable bluffing strategy. Now, when we come in for this $20 raise, we're not worried about running into a big hand here. You know, we're not worried about our opponent may have aces or kings and he's going to, to come back over the top. We're not worried about that at all because we're going to get hands like aces and kings just as frequently as he is. That's not going to give him any advantage here. Okay? In fact, if we only have to worry about him coming back at us with big hands, uh, that occurs with such small frequency that it will have no effect on our ability to conduct our strategy. But what we are very worried about is that our opponent starts coming back over the top with us as a bluff. Okay? Uh, he only gets aces, kings, queens a very small fraction of the time, but he gets dealt any two cards 100% of the time. And if he starts just bluffing us with any two cards, we have a very rough time with things. So what we're going to do is we're going to construct our range to make sure that he cannot profitably bluff us with any two cards. How do we do that? Well, let's say that we have the blind here. We have $7 in the pot. We raised to $20 and the pot is now $27. And let's say that our opponent re-raises this now to $60. Okay, right now he's betting $60 to win $27. Okay, now what he's doing, when he bets $60 to win $27, we divide 60 by 27. You see he's laying 2.22 to 1. Now, go to our little calculator here, a pot is 1, and he bets 2.2, he's laying 2.22 to 1, his break-even threshold is 68.9%. So, basically, uh, he needs us to fold about 70% of the time in order for his bluffing strategy to make a profit. So the only thing that we need to do to make sure that he can't bluff us off with any two cards to make sure that we can, when we construct our range, that we have at least 30% value hands, 30% hand of our hands can withstand this raise. And in part video number five, I showed you that here are our value hands, pocket aces, kings, and queens, and ace king. Uh, this makes up 34 hands total, 34 combinations of hands. If we want to make sure that this is no, that this comprises no more than uh, 30% of our range, we simply say 34 divided by 0.3 and we come up with 113. So we can have 113 hands total in our range. Now, we take out these value hands That leaves 79 hands. So, in addition to our 34 value hands, we can choose 79 different hands that we use as bluffs. Now, there's an important point I want to mention before we start choosing our range, and that is that in terms of optimal play, especially pre-flop, a bluff does not necessarily mean a junk hand. Okay. Uh, what we consider a bluff in this sense is any hand that cannot stand up to a 3-bet. If your hand cannot stand up to a 3-bet, it is essentially a bluff. Okay, And that can even include decent hands, like, um, say, king-queen or something, or ace-jack. You may consider those decent hands, but if you can't call a 3-bet with them, they're essentially bluffs. So. The next part, uh, the next video is really uh, going to be a direct continuation of this, and we're going to choose the exact hands that we're going to use in the rest of our range.